Good afternoon. As he had said, I'm Chief Bill Aubrey, Chief of Manhattan South Detectives. I'm here with Lieutenant uh, Jason Schleyer. He's the uh, CO of Midtown South Squad. We're here 24 hours removed from a horrible tragedy that happened yesterday that took the life of Alyssa Ellsman and injured 20 other pedestrians as they were walking along the sidewalk on a beautiful sunny day in Times Square. There were 20 injured besides Alyssa, and I'm gonna give you a breakdown of those 20. 19 were hospitalized at various hospitals. One was treated at the scene. Of the 19 that were tr treated at local hospitals, seven were admitted. There's still three that are in critical condition, and there's one that's very critical, and she is a 38-year-old woman from Canada. And we also have Alyssa's 13-year-old sister, Ava, who's being treated at Cornell Hospital for a collapsed lung and broken pelvis. Our heart goes out to Alyssa, her family, and all those that were injured yesterday for what they encountered. I'm gonna go through Richard Rojas. He's a 26-year-old individual from the Bronx. He's being charged today with one count of murder two for intentionally taking the life of Alyssa Ellsman. He's also being charged with 20 counts of attempted murder, too, for striking those 20 pedestrians as they walked along the street. He's being charged with five counts of aggravated vehicle homicide, which includes the death or the serious physical injury to, to individuals. As I repeated, I'm going to repeat as I stated yesterday, he was arrested two previous times for driving and drinking, and once in 2008, once in 2005, 2015, and he was arrested on May 11th for menacing. I'm gonna give you a timeline of how the events took place yesterday, how Richard ended up here in Times Square. At 10.30, he leaves his home in the Bronx. 11 o'clock, we have a plate hit. He's inbound from the Bronx coming into Manhattan. At 11.48, He's driving southbound on Broadway and 52nd Street. At 11.50, he's on 48th Street and 7th Avenue. At 11.52, he's on 47th Street and 7th Avenue. At 11.54, the first 911 call comes in. And we see him, as you've seen on the various videos, you see him on the left lane on 7th Avenue. As he approaches 42nd Street, he slows down. He allows traffic to pass and then he makes that right turn onto the sidewalk. He accelerates it while he's doing so. And while he accelerates, he starts to strike down the first pedestrians. As he hits between 42nd and 43rd Street, he strikes Alyssa. He continues on from 42nd to 43rd, accelerating. He continues on 44th, 45th. He actually goes underneath a scaffold. Parts of his car the uh, side view mirror, license plates are falling off as he's striking these pedestrians. People are being dragged. They're on top of the car. Finally, when he hits a bollard, a security bollard on 45th Street and 7th Avenue, his car stops. He gets out of his car where he encounters a traffic agent. They fall to the ground. And then there's other good Samaritans on and off duty law enforcement officers that apprehend him. At this point in time, we want to make sure that we do a thorough investigation, working along with our partners in the Manhattan District Attorney's Office to determine the exact motivation and his state of mind of Richard Rojas. We're going to look at his background, which we're currently doing. We have court orders and search warrants that were expedited. We have to make sure we look through his vehicle. We have to make sure we look through his home in the Bronx. And of course, the toxicology results to determine what type of chemical substance Richard was on. That, in that encompasses blood work that will be analyzed and that's expedited with the medical examiner's office. We expect results on that in the next few days. I can't help but wonder, and when I was speaking with the district attorney's office this morning, he left his house at 10.30 yesterday morning, and at 11.54, he came here to Times Square. There was no incidents in between. That goes to his state of mind. He, ex he waited for those cars to pass, and he accelerated, striking down these pedestrians. That goes to a state of mind and his motivation.
You're going to ask me about his statements. I'm going to keep it very broad. I don't want to get too specific. Again, the Manhattan District Attorney's Office has to present this to a grand jury, and I don't want to compromise that. Thank you. All right, we can take a few of your questions. Miles. I'll answer your first question in that uh, as far as chemical substances, whether they be PCP or any other chemical substances, synthetic chemical substances, you know, you look at it and um, there's preliminary tests that were done. They confirm what his statements were. And there's also a more thorough exam that has to be done with the medical examiner. And that's the blood results. Those are the results that we're waiting for. So he was in fact on PCP or I, I can't comment on the exact chemical substance but we're hoping that the blood work comes back in the next few days to confirm what we believe. What in any case, was, was there any threat to him? You know, it, it, as any case like this, the emotions are running high, and people are going to say and, and say things on, on, a, on, a, on an ind individual that just struck down 20 people and, and killed this 18-year-old this woman. They're going to say things. So, yeah, we, we will take any threat that comes in serious, and we're going to build in precautions. Okay, right over here. Right. Yeah, we, we have a counterterrorism counter component, and I can tell you, I spoke to the chief of counterterrorism, Chief Waters, this morning, and there are safety plans that were built in overnight, and you may not see or be aware of certain things. There's, of course, the obvious ones, the Jersey barriers, and there's the, there's the unobvious ones, the ones that you don't realize that are actually security measures that, that are in place. I can't answer that question. I'm here to speak about the investigation. Uh, okay. I'm Mario, try to get that. We're still going through the vehicle, but at, at this time, there's there's nothing that we found in a vehicle that would be out of the ordinary. Okay. He had a lot. He had a large knife. Um, he was he pled guilty, and um, you know was on May 11th. That's that's what I can ben? tell you right now. Okay. Right right down here, Tony. We're, we're going to go through his house. We, we had to apply for a search warrant with the courts. We have that search warrant, and um, we're going to go through his house. So we're going to do that today. Yeah. Julia. Are, are there any indications that he was affiliated with any sort of extremist organizations of any kind? None. Not, not, not whatsoever. He served in the Navy uh, from 2011 to 2014, so none that we see so far. Right. Do you see anything about a family or a job where he worked? I, I'd rather not comment on his statements. You know, you mentioned that the reports of death threats, I'm sorry if you've already answered this. We already talked about what was the nature? Did you talk about the nature of the nature? We're not going to discuss that this morning. Uh, any, any, is it mental illness that you could talk about? We're, we're going to look at his background. That's part of it as far as any me mental illness, history of psychological il illnesses. We're looking at that right now. Right Speaking here. with family. Uh, right so speak up. I'm sorry. You speak up. We, we, we'll always critique an incident like this. We get together, intelligence division, counterterrorism, and we'll look at an incident like this to see ways that we can improve and prevent something like this from happening in the future. We, we, we have him. Uh, he's actually being processed downtown right now. And of course, that would be something that we would look at. Same to you. Chief. Chief, what's your message to the Good Samaritan, the off duty officer, the bouncer that stopped him? What do you want to say? Great, to great the point. I, I just want to thank the, the people. When that happened yesterday, and just I would tell all of you, take a look at that video. It, it's a horrible thing that happened. These, these people were underneath that vehicle, they were on top of the vehicle. That car stops. And the one thing that stuck out when I watched that was there was a little girl there. She was probably about five years old. And you could see her wait about one or two seconds after that car flips up. And you'll see her coming out of that back of that car. And your heart goes out 
to everybody because that little girl would have been killed if it wasn't for that bollard stopping that car. Um, you know, and there's many more people that would have probably been killed or seriously injured if it wasn't for the security measures that were put in place on 45th Street. So yeah, I mean, you, you look at it and you, and you say, I want to thank the Good Samaritans. I want to thank the people that stopped them from beginning with that traffic agent to the security guard to uh, the on and off duty law enforcement officers, the people that work in the Times Square Alliance were there. Everybody came together to stop him from, from doing any more damage to, to this city. So, uh, yes. NJ. Bill, do you know uh, exactly why it is that he was not still in custody after his most recent arrest? You, we'll have to check with the courts on that. I'd rather not comment on that. I know he pled guilty. I know he was released. But we'll have to look in. The, it was in the Bronx, so we'll have to take a look at that. Thank you, everyone. He, he, he lives with his mom in the Bronx, and um, she's been cooperating with us. The neighbors have been cooperating. Everybody's cooperating because they see the carnage that happened yesterday, and they want to help us with us. Okay. Thank you.